Hello everyone, I'm about to share a clip that I've deleted from the previous video that was the update video about everything that's going on with the DMT laser experiment. I decided to remove it from that video because first of all I was making the other video a little bit too long, but also I felt like it belongs to a family of claims that's a little different. Reason being, everything about the laser you can verify for yourself. There's a few things you gotta dial in, but basically you can get the laser and then do the necessary things and verify that what I'm saying is correct for yourself. What I'm about to talk about in this next clip rests entirely on my experience. So I decided to release this clip separately and I'm recording this little introduction to make a few things clear. First thing I wanna make perfectly clear is that I'm not trying to convince anybody. It's simply to start a conversation about a certain experience that I'm having on DMT on a regular basis now, that I've heard some people experiencing similar versions of that, but mine seems to be in the extreme. And one of the main reasons for me releasing this clip is to encourage other people to come forth and talk about that. It's important because there are a lot of experiences that might be very valid that people don't talk about because they're afraid of being ridiculed, and for good reason. Some people told me they lost their jobs for talking about things like that, and even that is to some degree understandable. We are afraid of something we don't understand. We're afraid of individuals who seem to be talking in a way that seems to indicate that we might not know what they're gonna say or do next. So that concern is also understandable, but we need to start having a conversation with each other that is much more compassionate and open because there is a truth to the matter. It either is true or it isn't. Certain things are just like that, but we'll never get to the truth if we try and approach it only from one modality. Some people speak a different language, or their modality of looking at the world is different, but it doesn't render their experiences to be less valid than anybody else's. Science comes at the world by only measuring things. It's super successful and I'm all for it. However, the other modality of what one might call more spiritual is also a form of science. It's the science of experience, in that we pay close attention to what we're trying to study, which is our experience itself. And there are a lot of things to notice that unless you do that, you don't know this. These points are relevant because when we talk about the world, there are different ways to approach different problems. I'm claiming that we've found one domain in which we need both. We both need to be scientifically rigorous and try to understand how this connects to the rest of what we understand about the world, but we also need to be open to the possibility that there are certain attributes of our experiences, if not all of it, that is an integral part of what reality is doing, in a very real sense. I'm meeting a lot of people online, they don't seem to be aware that there's nothing that anybody has ever experienced that was outside of experience. They seem to not understand that even equations that people interact with are still perceived through experience. And if we're gonna keep calling each other dumb or misinformed just because we expressed an opinion that doesn't sit well with somebody else, we'll never get anywhere. So I wanna start a trend. I want to try and start a conversation in which I'm expressing my personal experience and I'm describing it in as much detail as I possibly can. And I want to see if it's possible for people to accept what I'm saying without immediately brushing it off as crazy or as a hallucination. Because this is the subject matter. I'm claiming that some of these things, if not all of these things, are not hallucinations. But we need a certain frame from which we can talk about these things and see if we can decide whether they are what we usually call hallucinations or not. To simply ask can this be created by the human brain is not a good question. It's not a good question because the human mind is Turing complete. It's a computational system that can technically, in theory, render and simulate anything. So it's an infinitely elastic argument. If you're saying that you have a magic wand that can do anything, you don't get to then say, well, it must be this magic wand at work because it doesn't explain anything. You have to talk about the specifics of how it actually is doing that. And this is a very complex conversation that will involve the neuroscience behind what the brain is doing when it's on DMT and when it's not on DMT and how it's experiencing reality itself. This is a very long and a very tedious conversation, but we have to start having it also from the perspective of our own experiences. And we have to stop ignoring people's accounts just because they sound a little outside of the realm of what we're used to accept as reality. By the way, anything that the truth might be, I'm open to it. If the case may be that what I'm about to tell you in the next clip is some kind of a, an effect that can be achieved when you do DMT a lot and then your brain produces some kind of a frame and then it utilizes DMT to construct those extremely coherent and continuous scenarios, 
I'm all for it. Let's talk about that. Let's find out how it's doing that. But there's definitely some abilities here that we're not talking about. And I want to get to the bottom of this. Now, I'm personally convinced that it's much more than that, but I'm always open being revised. So I hope you don't get triggered because I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm simply telling you my account and hopefully it can land as something that will make some people pause. I want to start a conversation that is constructive that we can all participate in and talk to each other with respect and compassion. So all of that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the next clip. The reason I'm convinced we're in the simulation is because there's something that has shifted in my perception of the space after I built the laser. Now, this is what we're entering, you kind of have to take my word for it land. And because of that, I want everybody to understand that this next few minutes, I don't expect anybody to believe me or to take it on face value. Every time I smoke DMT now, I have a console that opens in my home. Oh, hey. So this is another point that I think we'd need to discuss a little deeper. So it is true that the laser by itself does not tell us that we live in a simulation, even though I would say that the content of what we're saying implies that very strongly. I arrived at that conclusion over years with a lot of different data points that collected into my perception of the situation. The hardest one to deliver is what I'm personally experiencing now that I'm doing DMT. Ever since I built the laser about a couple of months after, something changed about my experience of the molecule. Now, this is a difficult point because nobody is under no obligation to take what I'm experiencing more seriously than just my personal experience. But because what I'm experiencing is so salient to me and so coherent and continuous over time, it made me think of what that means to actually experience something. Because yes, at the moment when I'm about to tell you, not a lot of people are experiencing it, but I'm experiencing it in a very realistic way. So there has to be some negotiation here that allows me to say what I'm experiencing without it being just brushed off as well you're hallucinating because I think I can tell the difference and I think most people can tell the difference they just don't allow themselves to be trusted with that information a couple of months after I built the laser I smoked DMT and an object appeared in my room now to anybody who never done DMT this is gonna be on the verge of impossible to differentiate between anything they think hallucinations are and why this seems to be different but to all the people who did try DMT I can say that that object did not seem to belong in the family of visuals and things that I usually see on DMT or if you talk to people what people usually report to see on DMT. DMT encompasses a very large family of phenomena that you can experience while you're on it but there's usually a signature of what things appear to be. So for example in the DMT space when you fully break through and you get into those like very high spaces things are moving in a very particular way and even though it's sometimes very difficult to distinguish each thing from another thing it's nevertheless coherent to that moment of experience so you can kind of make up that those things are you know doing this thing and they interact with other things in that way so there's some rules and some geometrical patterns that are clearly doing what they're doing but nevertheless it still belongs in a family of things that are like it's a pretty crazy and confounding experience the object i'm describing to you is i'm standing in my kitchen slash living room and it was like an egg shaped thing that then i noticed it had other sections as well almost like sections of the same thing they all appeared at once some of them were on the floor they looked like capsules and the central capsule started opening up and it almost sounded like it wanted to make the you know this futuristic sound kind of thing it didn't that was completely silent but that's the motion that it was doing and it started unfolding and opening up and i was flabbergasted because i've never seen anything like this one of the most interesting components about it is that it seemed completely there in the room with its own spatial coordinates just like any other object would have like a chair or a table in the room and i can walk around it and it would not depend on where my head is so it, it's completely on its own side it was space gray very slick it's the most beautifully designed thing I've ever seen in my life. I always say that Steve Jobs would flip in his grave if he would see that thing. And this thing kept on unfolding. And then from the middle, this podium came up literally like a podium you would imagine, you know, when somebody's giving a speech. And then from that podium, different screens came out and arranged himself around me. And there was a pair of gloves on the right and a carousel of VR glasses on my left that was kind of like spinning like this. And it will take me a whole video just to talk about the specifics of what each one of those panels look like and uh, what it does. And I don't mind doing that if people show interest. But for now, the important thing to say is that that thing is so realistic and so coherent. Imagine Tony Stark level augmented reality just opening in front of you. And here's the kicker. 
it has been happening 100% of the time since that day. Every time I smoke DMT, that thing opens up for me every single time. And again, we can talk about the functionality of this thing and how I can operate it with my attention, but it's always there. So take yourself through that. Put yourself in my shoes. The fact that it's always there for me and you can say, well, now you're just hallucinating. I, I was like, I don't think so because it's so repetitive. It's 100% of the time. And it is true that sometimes the panels that come up from the podium are different and there's like different, you know, set of menus, but I can recognize the different types of set of menus that come up. It's not like a haphazard kind of thing. This thing, the panels that I'm talking about, they're always exactly the same in the beginning. And then when the menus come up, they sometimes are different. Just like you would boot a laptop or a computer and then there will be different menus. But the laptop is the same. Like the panels that appear are exactly the same. But put yourself in my shoes. What am I supposed to tell the world if I'm experiencing this? Am I supposed to just hide it and pretend like it's not happening? I actually spoke to a lot of people on Reddit, people that are experienced with psychedelics and with DMT. And some of them did describe to me screens of different flavors and different sorts. And they describe those ultra futuristic structures that appear for them. And they too say that those objects seem to be different than the regular things in the DMT space. They look like translucent iridescent objects that just hover in the room they sometimes descend from the ceiling sometimes they come from the floor but they have their own motion they're very distinct and that is a very important data point this is where it really separates the drug induced experience that you feel that you're having and all of a sudden you makes you think wait a second what is happening here? This is way too coherent. And what I'm describing seems to be even more realistic in the sense that it, it's always there. The people that I spoke to, they sometimes haphazardly see this thing, but not like on a regular basis. For me, it's always there. Now, if somebody is experiencing something similar, please contact me because I would love to compare notes. And this is an example, one example, I want to emphasize this one example of one of those data points that together makes me understand that something else is happening here. It it's this thing coupled with the fact that it appeared after I built the laser and the laser works for multiple individuals. So I want to keep emphasizing this. The laser works for multiple individuals plus some communication that comes to me from the other side, which is when I'm doing DMT now, it was actually expressed to me directly that yes, this is a, I guess, augmented pocket of reality, or you can call it a simulated pocket of reality. It doesn't mean that I necessarily think that that must be the case because whomever is communicating can also be, you know, not telling the truth or this is part of some larger picture that we need to think that for now. All I'm saying is that someone is for sure there saying that. That's one of the data points combined with other data points. So it was important for me to emphasize because originally when I was recording this video, I didn't think I'm going to go into this. So I just kind of briefly said I have a console that opens up for me and I left it at that. And that's obviously neither here nor there. So I have to make a decision. Either I'm talking about it, which I'm doing now, or I'm not talking about it at all. So here you have it. This is one or more of the data points. But I want to emphasize that I'm not expecting anyone to take my word for it. I'm just telling you why my conviction of what's going on is higher than just looking at the laser. But I would say that even with just looking at the laser, if you do it for yourself, instead of talking about it on online and just trying to explain it away, if you actually try it for yourself and you look at it, you will understand what I'm talking about. It's very convincing on its own right.